The Ducan Tough Deck System is a flexible and waterproof sun deck coating that is user-friendly, low maintenance, and allows storage or a recreational living area beneath the deck. This superior water-based coating system provides long-lasting protection from water, sunlight, and everyday spills. Tough Deck is scientifically formulated for all weather exposures and everyday use. In three easy steps, your deck will be waterproof, slip resistant, and UV protected. This DVD provides complete instructions and handy tips for making your Tough Deck application as easy as possible. Before starting your Tough Deck project, be sure to calculate the amount of product and items you will need to do your deck. Our informative brochure has a handy quantity guide to quickly calculate average deck sizes, along with a material equation chart for the specific measurements of your deck. If you are acquiring a permit, be sure to check the building codes before you begin. The Tough Deck coating system can be applied over a variety of deck surfaces including new plywood, pressure treated plywood, fiberglass, hypalon rubber coatings, raised concrete decks, and metal. The Tough Deck system can also be applied over some water-based deck coatings. Please check our brochure for a list of compatible coatings. Remember to always do a test batch with the Tough Deck products if you are in doubt of the surface you are coating. If you have an existing slotted lumber deck, it can be refitted to accommodate the Tough Deck coating system. A solid underlay such as sanded 3 quarters or 5 8 inch tongue and groove plywood should be placed over the top of the plank decking, followed by the flashing around the perimeter. Tough Deck is the perfect solution for boat floors and docks because it is durable and it provides a slip-resistant waterproof surface. It can also be used in many other applications like walkways and raised concrete decks, to name a few. When looking for the perfect day to do your project, we recommend taking precaution with extremely warm or cold weather. The perfect temperature is between 10 to 25 degrees Celsius. Direct sun or extreme heat on the deck will cause the product to dry too quickly, which will make it difficult to spread. If heat is in question, always test the deck surface with your hand. Place the palm of your hand on the deck and hold for 5 to 10 seconds. If you can keep your hand there comfortably without burning, the deck temperature is ready to apply the tough deck system. Do not apply tough deck if rain is in the forecast within 48 hours after application. To avoid damp conditions, do not apply late in the day when the dew point will be reached within 2 to 4 hours. With exception, the step 2 texture coat may be applied later in the day. Building materials required when building your new deck. Joist hangers. Optional pier pads for leveling your deck. Post saddles for leveling your main beam to carry the joist. Metal or wood cant strip for up against your home. Galvanized non-return metal flashing for the perimeter of your deck. And 3 quarters to 5 8 inch good one-sided tongue and groove fir or spruce plywood. If you are acquiring a permit, be sure to check the building codes prior to starting your project. Materials needed when prepping and applying the Tough Deck coating system. Hammer, tin snips, three inch bristle paintbrush, two 10 mil Tough Deck paint rollers, paint roller cage and extension handle, paint tray, paint stick, Tough Deck texture coat applicator, sponge, bucket, 3-inch putty knife, utility knife or scissors, galvanized 1 and 1 quarter inch ring nails for the flashings, broom, 2-inch masking tape, drop cloth, belt sander, paint tray, and a pencil. We also highly recommend using a paint mixer and electric drill for mixing the Tough Deck texture coat. We strongly recommend reading the Tough Deck brochure before starting your application. Be sure to use the tongue and groove plywood in a staggered pattern. Once this is in place and the deck has been swept, the cast strip and flashing can be installed with galvanized ring nails every six inches. Install your cast strip first. When you come to the inside corner, cut the flashing on an angle with tin snips to make it fit in line with the existing cast strip meeting in the corner. Continue installing the cast strip.
When you reach the open end of your deck, you will need to cap off the end. Hold the back side of the can strip towards you. Now one and a half inches from the open end, cut a vertical line to the top of the V. Now, cut the extending lip on the alternate side. Cut this piece off. It should be approximately one and a half inches from the open end of the can strip. Now cut the previous piece from the top of the V to remove this piece. Fold over to cover the open end of the can strip. Cut off excess pieces until flush. Now install the flashing. When installing the flashing, be sure to leave a quarter inch space between the deck edge and the flashing. This prevents the flashing from warping. When installing flashing around the outside corners of the deck, mark off the edge of the deck with a pencil onto the top of the flashing. With the tin snips, cut along the pencil line to the edge. Then cut the small lip of the flashing in line with the pencil line. The flashing now bends easily around the outside corner. Always butt the flashings together to make a smoother finish. Be sure to sweep or vacuum the deck again prior to applying the joint filler. It is important to never substitute with any other filler. As an option before beginning, tape off the front of the flashing with two inch masking tape. To keep your siding clean, apply masking tape. Apply the joint filler over the transition from the deck to the can strip. Embed the tough deck seam tape by rolling evenly over the fill transition. Then apply another thin coat of filler over the tape and smooth with a putty knife. Fill all flashing transitions and follow with the seam tape and thin coat of filler. All plywood seams must be filled in tape and all screw indentations should be filled until flush. Let dry for one to two hours. Drying time will vary depending on temperature and the surface that you are applying the product to. If you have placed masking tape on the perimeter flashing during filling, it can now be removed. The masking tape on the siding should stay in place to protect it from the application of step one to step three on the can strip. Be sure to sweep the deck prior to applying the primer. Stir the primer well. 
With the paintbrush, brush a generous coat of the primer onto the can strip and flashings. Pour the Step 1 primer into a paint tray and saturate the paint roller. Uniformly apply the primer to the deck surface. Be sure to use all required product for your size of deck. Once dry, reapply primer to any areas that look sparsely coated. Let dry for one to two hours. Drying time will vary depending on temperature and the surface type. Step two texture coat is a dense coating that is meant to be applied at a rate that is considerably thicker than regular paint. The texture coat is to be applied in two separate applications. Please review the spread rates in our Tough Deck brochure. Check the spread rate after completing one sheet of plywood to be sure you're applying enough product. For best results, avoid applying texture coat in the direct sun or a hot deck surface. Applying in extreme heat causes the product to dry prematurely, which will considerably shorten the working time. An ideal time to apply is either in the shade, first thing in the morning, or last thing in the day. Prior to applying the texture coat, two inch masking tape can be adhered to the front of the flashing to avoid drips. Using a paint stick or a mixer attachment for a drill, thoroughly mix the Tough Deck texture coat until no suspended lumps or sediment remains at the bottom. Fill a clean bucket with water and have a wet sponge readily available. Keep the texture coat applicator close by for smoothing the cut in on the perimeter of the deck. With a three inch paintbrush, Cut in the texture coat approximately four to six inches wide around the perimeter of the deck. If needed, you can smooth shortly after with the wet texture coat applicator. Once the perimeter has been texture coated, the extension handle can be attached to the applicator. Attaching the extension handle is an option, and in some cases it may be easier to hold the applicator for more control. From the furthest point from the exit of the deck or inside corner, pour a six to eight inch puddle onto the deck surface. This should cover approximately four to six square feet when spread out with the applicator. Using very light consistent pressure, spread the puddle, moving the blade to evenly disperse the product. Spread the texture coat in a consistent way using a left and right motion and pulling it towards you. On your last few passes, pull the blade down across the bare plywood to get the excess product off the blade. This helps keep the product from dripping from the applicator as you lift it to do another pass. For consistency, it also helps to smooth over the surface in the opposite direction than the first to smooth out any ridges. Be sure to lower the handle as you pull the blade towards you to keep the product consistent.
Intermix a new bucket of texture coat when you have reached the halfway point in your previous container and stir well. Remember, the extension handle is only an option. The applicator can be handheld if you require more control over a small section or an inside corner. Follow the procedure of pouring a puddle and lightly pulling the applicator for the entire deck. Remember to intermittently clean the applicator blade. Let your first application of texture coat dry two to four hours. Drying time will vary depending on temperature, humidity, and surface type. Test to be sure the texture coat is absolutely dry before continuing with your second application. It is important to completely clean your texture applicator, the bucket of water, and the sponge after the first coat to be sure it is clean for the second application of texture coat. Be sure to stir the texture coat prior to the second application. Brush on your second cut-in of texture coat around the perimeter of the deck and smooth with the applicator if necessary. Start your second application of texture coat in a different corner than the first and repeat the process of application. For any sparsely coated areas, be sure to cover these sections well so you have a sufficient wear layer. Let the second application of texture coat dry two to four hours. Drying time will vary depending on temperature, humidity, and surface type. Remove all masking tape from the front edge of the flashing. If necessary, cut away any dried excess texture coat with a utility knife. Stir your tinted color coat well. With a paintbrush, generously coat the edges of the deck first with the color coat, and be sure to do the front of the flashings. Pour the color coat into the paint tray. If using the three gallon size, the roller can be dipped directly into the bucket. A paint tray will not be needed. Saturate the roller into the color coat and starting from an area on the deck, like an inside corner or the furthest area away from the exit, generously apply the color coat over the entire deck surface. Be sure to intermix your containers when you reach the halfway mark in the container. Stir well and apply.
Let dry for one to two hours or more until the color coat is dry. Drying time will vary depending on temperature and surface type. After the color coat has dried, a bead of Tough Deck caulking sealant should be applied to the transition between the can strip and building to prevent water from going behind the can strip. For 13 degrees Celsius or 55 degrees Fahrenheit to 23 degrees Celsius or 73 degrees Fahrenheit, let cure for at least 72 hours prior to wet weather conditions, light traffic, or deck furniture on surface. For 24 degrees Celsius or 75 degrees Fahrenheit to 30 degrees Celsius or 85 degrees Fahrenheit, let cure for at least 48 hours prior to wet weather conditions, light traffic, or deck furniture on surface. Allow only light traffic for the first 14 days. For maintenance of your tough deck, reapply color coat every two to three years to keep a sufficient wear layer and to give it the much needed UV protection it requires. Now that the deck is complete, you will have a non-slip and splinter-free surface to enjoy with your family and friends. If you have applied the tough deck to a second level deck, you will also have a sheltered and waterproof living space below to utilize for storage or covered living. To care for your tough deck surface, use the Duke cleaner and degreaser. The Duke is safe for use on your deck as well as other areas around your home. It's great for barbecue grease, oil spills, deck furniture, or as a general all-purpose cleaner indoors or out. Here's some helpful tips. If a faster drying time is required or if you're working at the lower end of the temperature range, a forced air kerosene heater may be used. Never use bleach, harsh cleaners, or solvents on your Tough Deck coating as it could damage it. For installation of railings, be sure to use Tough Deck caulking sealant for all screw holes and be sure to caulk around the edges of the posts and can strip to house to ensure a watertight seal. Always check any caulked areas yearly to be sure it is still intact. Allow only light traffic for the first 14 days while the coating dries. Never use metal deck furniture without caps on the base of the legs as this could cut into your tough deck coating. Use a plastic snow shovel to remove the snow from the surface. A metal snow shovel could gouge your tough deck coating. If you have any further questions regarding application of your Ducan tough deck coating system or any of our other products, please contact us.